On today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, we debate. Our Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I feel like I'm Charlie Caruso on on first take. Uh, my name is Josh Neighbors. I'm the host of Locked On Big Twelve. Jonathan Davis is the host of Locked On Longhorns. Mark Rogers is Mister College Football, and these two have butted heads about Texas. I've said my piece about Texas on this podcast several times uh, about what's going to happen this season. Everybody wants to hear what other people have to say about Texas. Now, if you're Locked On Longhorns listening to Jonathan Davis is probably pretty positive at the Longhorns, and there's some rights to be. But Mr. Mark Rogers, Mr. College Football, you do not think Texas uh, approaching nine wins is likely this year. You feel like we're headed more towards a log jam. Well, I will look at the uh, recent past. Uh, if you look at the schedule, first and foremost, I think there's a team called Alabama playing in Austin on the second week of the season. So if there's an automatic loss in college football among – power teams, brand name teams, that would be the loss right there. That would Mm -hmm. be the most guaranteed loss I can think of among, again, big teams in college football. So there's number one. I guess number two, you are playing Kansas, correct? They're on the schedule this year, right? Yes. So there's two. Comedian Mark Rogers, everybody. He is he's here. He's here out. He's out in full force. I should have saw that one coming. I should have saw that one coming. Okay. So anyway, so uh, let's see. 2009 was uh, the big national championship run uh, to the BCS championship game at the Rose Bowl. Since then, how many Texas teams have won nine games? What, 2018? Maybe Mac Brown had one other Texas team that went nine and four. But we got to keep this in the regular season. They got to go nine and three. I think this has only happened once since 2009. So the odds are on my side. I'm an odds guy. I look at probabilities to start things out. Let's start with probabilities. The probabilities is this program, looking at the recent past, has not shown us anything close to a nine-win team. All right, so Jonathan, I I think the easiest thing that you're probably going to say about this is that uh, this is not past year's teams, correct? Obviously, right? This is not the past year's Texas teams. And we're just going to go down the schedule. That's the easiest way to do it is to look at it and go down the schedule. So, Mark, I want you to go down the schedule with me. I have it right here in front of me. And we're going to talk about these teams that Texas is supposedly going to lose to. Okay. So, Louisiana Monroe, that's that's a win. For the last 12 years. Okay, all right, all right, whatever, Mark. Whatever, Mark. Whatever, Mark. All right, so you all. Louisiana Monroe, that's a win, right? Uh, I hope so. Otherwise, this might take an hour and a half if we're like, I hope so. I do. <laughs> Other, <laughs> otherwise, we're debating whether Texas is going to lose double digits this season. I, yeah. I okay. Think, I think, no. All I right. Think we're all right. On board. So, all right. We're so Tex- Texas one. is Texas is going to beat Louisiana Monroe. Yeah. Alabama, I'll give you right now that is a loss. Although I think Texas is going to be more competitive in that game than you probably and most people probably think. But yeah. Alabama, I'll give them that. They're they're going to lose that game at least right now on paper utsa they're going to win that game texas tech they're going to win that game i respect west virginia but texas is going to beat west virginia oklahoma i'll come back to oklahoma hold Iowa on, State. Hold on. hold on stop i think we should stop right there i think we start with, stop at the first six so okay. you all was a win alabama is a loss utsa win at jones tnt is gonna be a tough one but i think they can beat tech west virginia and that's the first five in oklahoma like Four and two through those six games puts you on track for nine, in my opinion. In my opinion. That- exactly. So so this, outside of Alabama, which is, okay, we're going to give them that loss. I think if I'll you look at it. I'll even give them Oklahoma loss. I'll even give them Oklahoma. That's well, that's, so that's what I'm good. saying. I, out of, they're going to beat Oklahoma State, too. You, have, you look at the top three, they're going to beat Oklahoma State. I think that they're going to lose to Alabama. And I think that they're either going to lose to Oklahoma, as much as it pains me to say, Oklahoma and Baylor. Or if they only lose to one of those teams, then some team is just going to come out of nowhere and beat them like a West Virginia, uh, maybe a, a Kansas State. I don't know. That would be a bad loss. I, they're they're going to go nine and three in the regular season. 
the only teams I even see remotely having a chance to beat them right now, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Baylor. That would give them three losses. Boom, you're wrong, Mark. Mark, how many losses do you see in their first six games? Uh, most it can't be more than two with Oklahoma and Alabama. It that has can't to be. be. I find this rather amusing that we're talking about a <laughs> Texas team that lost seven games last year and is routinely It's a going, totally different team. Is routinely they're, going between five and seven and seven and five. But they they're were better the at same. every level this year than they were last year. And they had leads okay. going into the fourth quarter on Oklahoma, Baylor, and Oklahoma State. Or they didn't finish those games, but those were the three best teams in the Big 12. Three quarter games this year. <laughs> is that what they're going to do? I, I didn't get that memo. I didn't hear that announcement by the Big 12 that they're going to play until halftime and quit. All right, so... Then I'm going like 11-1. and one. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, guess it, I guess it is. Um, all right, so I guess the second question you really hear, you know, I'll go to you first, Mark, on this is, like, what do you think it takes... I mean, you said odds guy, probability guy. Like, what what's the record that gets to Texas to, to the Big 12 championship game, and do you think they get there? Well... Uh, I'm going to go back to, I think, why Jonathan set this up and what he probably jumped on was I made the statement uh, when we had him on our West Virginia show. And no, I'm not a West Virginia guy. I had him on our West Virginia show that uh, the Texas over under that I saw was at eight, was at exactly eight. Mm -hmm. And that I was more confident that they would fall short of the eight than succeed the eight. So I was more confident that they're going to go seven and five versus going nine and three. And even if they don't, I'm good with a push because I think the probabilities are on my side. So take the eight under. And if you push it, fine. Texas goes eight and four. So if you're going to ask me what my season prediction is, I'm going to tell you, I don't know exactly right this second, but if you're going to push me for it right this second and I had to give it, I'd say Texas is going to go eight and four. Um, all right. So uh, Mark, I want to go back to you on this. Are, are you judging this off of past year's events or do you, or if, you, if, if the answer is no, it's fine. But like, have you really given this year's team a look and said, eh, am, eh, you know, am I, am I assessing them against the rest of the big 12 or am I using what I've seen from Texas the last decade to make these assertions? The well, last decade. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. Oh, because I make the same argument against other people. I'm not going to uh, make a prediction on Texas football in 2022 because they failed under Charlie Strong. Right. Uh, And and I know, obviously, Xavier Worthy is a freak, and they've added Ajaya Hall and the, I can't think of Naylor from Wyoming. Isaiah Naylor. Isaiah Naylor from Wyoming. And they've made all sorts of, they added uh, the Alabama linebacker, what, uh, Shane, no, I'm mixing up USC, Shane Lee. Uh, yeah, Jalil Billingsley at tight end and on and on and on. Uh, so I understand, but uh, they have fielded rosters that were top five to 15 in the nation repeatedly and not met those expectations. So I need to see Steve Sarkeesian actually take a group of football players and coach them to their abilities, not exceed their abilities. He, he, underachieved at Washington, largely underachieved at USC. So he's already been at two big football brands. Wait, he didn't underachieve at Washington. <laughs> I believe he got the USC job after the Washington job, correct? He did get the USC job. I don't job think you're going from Washington. Washington. He also got the Texas under- job after the USC Warming. job. So, well, no. no well, after, after, after what he did in Alabama. Also, this is also he, a different person. He, he did enough at Washington to warrant, warrant Yeah, no, I, I, the USC Cesar job. Cesar did not, I, I mean – you know, Washington was not like this unbelievable football program, you know, and they had some bad years. I'm pretty sure Chris there's Peterson a reason why they called it the crap much up. better with yeah, the Washington Peterson program sure. than what Steve Sarkeesian did. Yeah, I'm but I mean, he got the USC failure. job. It's not like, you know, it's not like. I'm not saying he was a failure stopped. at Washington, but yeah. he did not have a good run at Washington. He did not have a good crazy. run at USC. And he's off to a bad run at Texas in terms of on the field performance this last season. Uh, all right, uh, Jonathan. I assume you disagree with the the roster talent thing. It's my belief that this how do, how this do you roster. Disagree with that. So, because this is this is what you're missing, Mark. 
when you look at it, like I said, last year the team went five and seven, but that wasn't a five win team. You could talk about the second half collapses. And yes, I know we don't play halftime football games or third quarter football games, but that was not a five win football team. Now you look at this team and you just mentioned it. Well, they, were on the offensive side. <laughs> they were a five win football team. They were a five win football team. You understand what you understand what I'm trying to say, Mark. Yeah. Anyways, they, they're, they're, better they're, better <laughs> they're better this yeah. year at every level. You can't name another team, and Josh, you can let me know if I'm wrong. You can't name another team in the Big 12 that has literally got better at every position like the Texas Longhorns did. You talk about a quarterback with Quinn Ewers. You talked about receiver bringing in Isaiah Nair and Ajay Hall. You talk about a tight end bringing in Jaleel Billingsley. You talk about the offensive line bringing in one of the best offensive line classes of all time. Even if you didn't get better at the running back position, you already had the best running back in the country in B. John Robinson. You got better on the D-line, bringing in eight defensive linemen in the 2022 class. You got better at linebacker, bringing in uh, Diamante Tucker Dorsey to transfer from James Madison. And you got better at DB uh, through your recruiting class and through the transfer portal with Ryan Watts. They literally got better at every position. And that's why they're going to win nine games, and that's why they're going to make it to the Big 12 championship game. So, yes, I strongly disagree with Mark and his – judgment of the 2022 texas team based off the past which he claims he's not doing but he clearly is okay. because they we haven't done it before team. so that's why they, you can't envision it happening this year they were a five-win football team last year okay yes. well they're they're going to be in there a nine-win five football, five football team right now last Mark. year and they are improved so they could go eight and four and be much improved i would consider eight and four to be a much improved mark over five and seven and eight. i would love to know like how long have you been watching texas football or covering texas football and how so how many times have you made similar statements prior to a texas football season than what you are making right now i'm guessing many times that's my guess well if you believe in tom herman you are not the sharpest knife in the drawer unless you're a texas fan because it's fair to just put on rose colored glasses for that uh all right, so let's Steve let Sarkeesian's us. Sarkeesian's track record right now is pretty similar to Tom Herman's, if it is Tom Herman's. Well, he's coached one year. I mean, I would say let's give him more than one year. We'll, also, we'll get to that later. Well, well, yeah, so, him I, three football there's a reason, programs. There's a reason why Bo Davis, the, the Bo Davis video was such a big thing. I mean, that's. I believe the sh the sentiment Bo Davis shared on the bus was uh, one that Steve Sarkeesian shares about many other parts of the roster, not just the defensive line last season. All right, we have to hit a quick word from our sponsors on today's show. Today's show is brought by Built Bar. Go to built.com today. It's built.com. Use promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15. Uh, you guys get the new Mud Pie Built Bar. It is delicious. It is good for you as well. Less than 200 calories, plenty of protein as well. Go to built.com today. Promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15, 15% off today. All right, so Steve Sarkeesian. Um, we've heard, we've heard your thoughts, Mark, about one Steve Sarkeesian, uh, Jonathan, the thing that, that, you know, if you are a Texas believer that you have to sell, and I understand why people like Mark aren't buying, it's a great point that this Steve Sarkeesian is different than the one that, yeah, I mean, his best seasons at Washington was what, uh, not, uh, eight wins and a couple seven win seasons and then eight wins was good for Washington at the time. And also USC, you know, he peaked with a nine and four season. Obviously things fell off track personally for him. But why should we believe like this is the guy that can now coach at an extremely high level and get this team over the hump? Yeah. So with Sark, you know, if you're being honest, it's tough, right, to, to make that case. And, and, you know, I understand why detractors or Mark would say what they've said. I mean, this is a coach that has yet to have a, you know, a double digit winning season as a head coach, you know, in college football. Right. And so you look at what he did at Alabama and obviously we know his track record working with quarterbacks, getting quarterbacks to the league and what he was able to do offensively at Alabama. But Sark, I think, would be the first one to tell you that he probably has a lot to prove as well. And even though it was his first season, he didn't really get to put his imprint on the roster in his first year like he did this year. And I think you'll see different going five at seven at Texas, regardless of if, even if you show up the day before the season starts is a disappointment. So um, I think that Sark will be the guy moving forward. Um, you know, I'm also, you know, the Texas fan host of the Texas podcast that, you know, definitely thinks this team is different and will come out and do something that Mark hasn't seen them do in like 10 years, you know, <laughs> which is be competitive and go out and try to win the Big 12 and, and be one of the best teams in the Big 12. Uh, but I definitely think Sark has a lot to prove as a head coach. I think he's the right guy because now I think the culture is different and the energy around this football team is different. But nothing he's done in the past, I don't think I can definitively say Sark is the right guy and anybody who thinks not is wrong. 
Um, you know, I, I would ask you, Mark, like if somebody said, all right, well, this guy's clearly a good offensive mind and this group is extremely talented. So, you know, I should, the, the response would be, Hey, look, this group is a group that he should succeed with. And if he doesn't, obviously, you know, you can be right. But I mean, would you have any problem with somebody saying I back a good offensive coach with this much offensive skill talent, which I have to say, this is more, this is more like talent than I, I can remember a Texas offense having. Like they have the best running back in the country. They have one of the top mm. five wide receivers in the country. They got two of the three top, you know, uh, um, wide receiver transfers. Jordan Whitting, do people forget he's a really good wide receiver as well. Jaleel Billingsley, obviously tight end. Like if somebody said, all right, this, this group, he's going to succeed with, what would you say, you know, to that? Like, it's going to be a sure thing, I guess. You could say. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. Like if Texas went 10 and two this year, I wouldn't be surprised by it. Like, I don't think this is a, uh, you wouldn't, be, so you, you wouldn't be surprised by it. Because it sounds – because I'll be honest, for the first 15 minutes of the show, I think it go sounds like you'd be really surprised by it. I, what, what have I stated that's not factual? No, what I'm – What have I stated I'm, that's not factual? Mark, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying is it sounds like you would be surprised about a 10 and 2. Yeah, somebody who took the under at 8 for Texas wins like, definitely would probably good. be you, would probably yeah. be surprised if they won 10 games. No, That's I wouldn't point, be surprised. Right? I've been watching football for 45 years. I'm not going to be surprised by seeing Texas right. meet up on – I mean, okay, but you're not expecting them to win 10 games. No, I'm not expecting them to win 10 games. No, You're not expecting them to win nine games. I'm not expecting them to win nine games, but it's and, not going to – I would not bat an eye if somebody said Texas is going to go 10-2 and two this year. I'd say, sure, they could. There's so, okay, playing, so – yeah, right. they're playing okay. in a marginal league. Sure, they could. Yeah, but it's a, it's a marginal league that you don't feel like they sh- they they're gonna win. So <laughs> I, I if they need to fail, and they've got a coach who. So basically, when we talk about coaching hires, post Mac Brown, we should have had more faith in Charlie Strong. I I understood why they hired Charlie Strong coming off his performance at Louisville. I understand coming off his performance at Houston, why they would hire Tom Herman, which I believed was a good hire uh, who got them to a big 12 championship game and one good season, one strong top 10 finish in 2018. I don't know why they hired Steve Sarkeesian. And after one year, five and seven, he's he's proving my skepticism. Who would you have? Well, it's one year. I mean, I mean, you know, it is one year, but he's had two other jobs that have shown capable of winning big and he didn't do it. Yeah, he's time. different. I mean, he was an alcoholic back then. Like, I think, I think we should, <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm being honest. That, that cost him his job. Like, like, yeah. like this, he's, it feels like he's a different, like, I think we've seen, you know, I hate to be so crass, but I thought we saw through Alabama, through Atlanta and now at, at Texas as a person, he's not the same person. And he admitted that I was an arrogant, cocky guy who had a crippling, crippling personal problem. I mean, yeah. I think he's a little bit different of a guy. So, like, this feels like a newer person to me. And that that that, that is my point. I just want to know, Mark, who – sorry, sorry, John. I'm just really no, curious. No, wait, I, yeah, I was going to make sure we got back to your question. Well, who should they who have hired? Who would you rather hired in, in that offseason? Because there are a lot of names. Different ways. I'm, I'm just curious. What are your thoughts? Mm, I'm trying to think who was available. Obviously, it doesn't even matter. In in number one in today's college football world, it doesn't matter who's available. You can go get Brian Kelly right. or Lincoln Riley if you want them. Number mm-hmm. two, especially if you're Texas, you can go do that. So, I can think of all sorts of coaches that I'd rather have than. I'll, th- let's start with those two. I'd rather have Brian Kelly. I'd rather have Lincoln Riley. I'd rather have Ryan Day. I'd rather have Nick Saban. I'd rather have Dabo Sweeney. Should we okay, hold on. Oh, I mean, they, I mean, of no, no, course. No, no, this, like, they, not, you're, not, not coaches you're not even you picking coaches that hired. Texas fans would argue with you about. Yeah, yeah. These, these guys are awesome coaches. Nobody's going to argue that. But, like, <laughs> that, that could have rationally been, you know, look, I know we saw the big moves, but, like, that wasn't a thing when they hired Sark. Like, the, I mean, Brian Kelly to LSU Well, it wasn't a thing phenomenal. when that happened last year either. Well, yeah, but last year was an, an anomaly. I mean, sure, those guys might have been, but like Lincoln Riley's not going to Texas. <laughs> You're from Oklahoma. <laughs> like, Lincoln Riley's not going to Texas. Brian Kelly, sure, that actually, you know, there's a chance. I think maybe that one trip to the playoff, we you know, like, I think he kind of needed that one against Alabama, the last one at least, to be like, all right, this is not going to work type deal. But, John, so, go ahead. Sorry. So, so knowing what you know now from Sark's first year in, Urban Meyer's tenure in Jacksonville. Would you have ta- would you have hired Urban Meyer? Uh, well, there's no 
there's there's these guys are in two completely different yeah. universes in regards to their accomplishments. It's not even close. Urban Meyer has the greatest winning percentage in the history of the game. <laughs> so, but obviously we've seen a lot of misgivings in terms of Urban Meyer and what he did. I don't know if he's going to, I'd have to make a judgment call as to whether Urban Meyer just steps right into back into college football and becomes the best or second best or third best coach in the game, or he's forever gone off the rails. Uh, that's, that's a determination to be made, but there's no comparison between those two guys in terms of what they've accomplished and what you would think Urban Meyer only being in his mid fifties should be able to accomplish. Yes. Urban Meyer is a better hire than Steve Sarkeesian. I agree. I, I do agree with that. I think the one question we all have, and you brought it up, Mark, it's a great point. Like would he fit in today's modern college football climate with kids? That That's kind of the big question. Can he simulate back to it? Um, because of what's come out about right. him. Yes. Right. He is not a, he's not the most pleasurable person. And we know you have, you do have to like take care of kids a bit more now than you did before in the past. Um, yeah. All right. One more quick word from our sponsors today. And I have, then I have one question I want to ask you both, not on the menu. I'm going off menu on this next one. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> quick word from our sponsors. All right. So here's the question. Here's the question. Um, Cause I've thought about this so much. Mark, go to you first and then Jonathan, what would it mean to you for, Texas to be back because I think I think the one big conversation one big misnomer we have in this entire college ball world about Texas is like we all have definitions of what it means for Texas to be back it can be one year it can be multiple years it can be a certain accomplishments but what does that mean to you for Texas to be back what what are the necessary conditions so for me for Texas to be back uh, what does that look like and mm -hmm. I'm glad that you framed it that way because I do the same thing when people say so-and-so is relevant or so-and-so is overrated. Like, what does that mean? Let's right. define that. So for Texas to be back for me, and we won't even go into SEC play, is they need to be seriously contending for conference championships ever, just about every year. So if they were to go 10-2 and two and 10, just I'm giving you an example, 10-2 this year, 10-2 next year, and they – Lost once in the Big 12 championship and won once. You'd say it's that's back. That's back. I think that's totally fair. Jonathan, what do you think? Yeah, I I I would agree with that. I'll take it a step further. I think that when you go into each season, if you can legitimately say that Texas might end up as one of the college football playoff teams at the end of the season, then I think that that's back. So the Big 12 success that you mentioned, like you said, we won't even touch the SEC. But going into the season, you need to look at Texas and say – that's either they're either going to be one of the college football playoff teams or they have legitimate potential to be one of the top four. If it's moved to top eight or top 12, whatever, at that time, they need to be a college football playoff <laughs> contender. And I think at least while they're in the Big 12, I think Big 12 championship and being one of the best teams in the Big 12 competing for a Big 12 championship, that should be the minimum. Because I, I think if Texas is back, then the only team I mean, you know, we've seen the, the rise of Baylor and, and Oklahoma State has been consistent. But I think the only team in the Big 12 that should really be able to rival them if Texas is at its peak prowess is Oklahoma. And so, yeah, I think that the Big 12 success and Big 12 championships, that should be the minimum. I think it for Texas to be back, it needs to be college football playoff worthy each year. I only had one other little side note to that, which which I find fascinating because I've got no stake in the game here. I could care less if Texas goes 12 and 0 or 0 and 12. It makes no difference. To that's me. not that's not true. No, financially you are invested. you you, you <laughs> there you go as, as i am I, as I, i'm also financially invested in texas. yeah it makes no difference to me anyway yeah. I, i've gotten predictions wrong in the past so if i get another one wrong that's fine uh what what fascinates me about the situation with the big 12 in texas and oklahoma is how well these schools all of them involved in this domino effect how well are they going to play meaning if Oklahoma and Texas, let's say they go to the last two Big 12 championship games that they're members, that's obviously a bad look for the Big 12. We are really, we're not only losing all our and money and yes. all our brands, those are the two best teams, and there they go. Versus, it's a bad look for Oklahoma and Texas if, let's say, Baylor and Oklahoma State, some combination of the other teams go to the championship games, and they're going eight and four their last couple of years, and they're like, We'll send you off to the SEC, but shoot, you couldn't even win our conference. Uh, likewise, I'm intrigued by Cincinnati, Memphis, Houston, BYU coming in. And if there's an overlap, which it appears 
right now, the way things stand, there's going to be an overlap. How are those teams going to compete with Oklahoma and Texas in the same conference at the same time? That's going to be fascinating. I'm intrigued by all of it. And then Oklahoma and Texas moving into the SEC. Part of me is going to think it's going to be funny if, if the SEC beats them down. Part of me is going to think it's funny if they go in there and they prove the SEC is not that great. We can handle this. Or maybe it is great in Texas and Oklahoma would be great. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we're all happy. I don't hope that happens <laughs> as a locked on Big 12 person. All right, guys, thank you so much. Mark, tell people where they can find you and your work and all of its variety. Yeah, so I'm on YouTube at Voice of College Football. Uh, just look that up, the Voice of College Football, right there on YouTube. we got 25 team channels plus our main channel, and uh, we are talking college football constantly all the time. Awesome. And uh, Jonathan is your Well, your of show course, also. this is Locked On Longhorns. Long you know, Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan Davis, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But I have to thank Josh Neighbors, host of Locked On Big 12, for coming on and helping – moderate this conversation between me and Mark Rogers. So Josh, tell them where they can find you and all your uh, great on, work on Twitter at Josh neighbors, underscore at LO big 12 as well. And also wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube gentlemen, it was a pleasure. It was civil. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Thank you. <laughs>